guys, welcome back to Straight Lines. This is part two. So what we've done before, a little recap. We were able to understand uh, the meanings of coefficients and the equation of the straight line in the form gradient intercept form. So you remember y equals mx plus c. So we also use the general equation of the line in a sort of x plus by equals, let's say, d. All right, and we also uh, learn how to convert from one type of a form into another. So actually, we can we used to convert equation uh, of uh, gradient, so gradient intercept form into general equation. So on the way back, I explain to you how to do it. So if someone who are not sure how to work it out, just go back to the part one and just watch it and try to learn and then only come back here. So now what we're gonna do, we apply the concept of coordinate geometry and try to uh, solve different tasks dedicated to it. And the first like sort of task uh, is how to find line of symmetry. So this is about line of symmetry because it's the line, right? We need to apply the series of lines and I'll show you how to work it out. So let's, let's struggle with the first task. Consider the points A, B, and C. So plot the points and locate D such that A, B, C, D is a rectangle. All right, so the first question. Let's do it. So what we're going to do, we want to use Cartesian plane. All right, so Y, X, because all coordinates positive, I use the first quadrant. So first quadrant for this reason. So let's set up the first point A, 1, 3. So remember 1 as the first coordinate for x and 3 here. So yeah, let's set up here. That's A. So next point B, 6, 3. We'll have it somewhere here. So actually, of course, I uh, tried to draw as much as I can, as much accurate as I can. And so I'm trying to locate those points so that uh, probably, uh, and according to the test, they form a rectangle. But I stick to just coordinates. Okay, so that's point B. C, 6, 1, somewhere here. And let's say D is right there. So why? Because in order to form a rectangle, Obviously, that's the only location for point D Oops, to be available here. All right, so we've got rectangle, all right? So state the coordinates of D then. All right, so question B is pretty easy to answer. As you can see, just 1, 1, all right? So write down the equation of any lines of symmetry. All right, so how many lines of symmetry rectangle has in just what the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry is the line so that if you turn um, around this, uh, let's say, line, your shape, it, um, become, it, it comes back to the original shape. So for example, let's assume we have rectangle, all right? So I'll do it separately. So we are to put the line of symmetry so that a rotation around it allows us to match the shape after rotation with the original shape. So obviously here, the line should go parallel to those two sides, all right? And if you rotate, let's say, uh, 360 degrees or 180 degrees, so you'll get the same shape, all right? So... Here is also if you rotate around the vertical axis. So basically the line of symmetry becomes the axis of rotation. Of course, you need to rotate uh, by 180 degrees, by 360 in this case, um, but the minimum angle that you need to rotate with is 180 degrees. Because for example, if you rotate 90 degrees, you'll have like, Mm, of course, uh, not the previous orientation of the shape. So, but for example, let's take a circle for comparison to, you know, to fill contrast. So, uh, 
rotational axis that goes through oh okay um, I forgot to mention actually the rotational uh, the line uh, of symmetry or rotational x should be uh, within the shape all right so you can of course for a circle and for a rectangle you can also put it you, you know in the middle point so that it goes uh, from the plane to you all the way back I mean the line of symmetry uh, be perpendicular in this case to to the plane where you shape but we only consider a case where the uh, lines of symmetry is within the plane where your shape um, is situated all right so for example here for the circle uh, this is obviously a line of symmetry so go, go, that goes through the centers through and represent basically diameter so it'd be as diameter so how many lines of symmetry you may, you may put here i think it's infinite number because you can like slightly shift your points and the next line of symmetry becomes here and by the way so um if you rotate around this you know um, around this axis of symmetry you'll get just the same uh, shape, the same circle, no matter uh, like where you have this line. Okay, so for example, if it's here, so you're just rotating by 180 degrees around it. All right, so that's why this is like simply a uh, circle has infinite number of lines of symmetry. All right, so let's go back to rectangle and try to answer our questions so write down the question of line symmetry so we established that it has two lines of symmetry all right so I mark them red so we need to split opposite side by two equal parts so basically we need to find midpoint here so that's why we apply the concept of um, coordinate geometry so midpoint in order to find coordinates of the midpoint obviously we need to use points let's say bc for midpoint m1 and the same for a and d for midpoint m2 all right so first of all let's drop the line here it's gonna be like that say this is line one and now we drop the equations so the equation of this line okay in order to draw and in, in order to figure out the equation of the line so basically if we use the general form ax plus by equals d so how many points we need we need to have just two points we can plug the coordinates but first we need to divide by d in order to get like simplified equation so that we only have just simply two variables all right so a over d and b over d so let's mark them as let's say um, a1 x plus a2 y equals one and then we always can go back to our general form all right so we have an equation and in order to do that we need to just block the two midpoints right so first for this reason we calculate the m1 points um, coordinates for this point so in order to calculate what simply we need to do we need to as you remember need to take uh, the coordinates x coordinates for let's say b and x coordinates c add them up and divide by two that's how we find the midpoint coordinates all right and the same we need to do for y coordinates so I wrote the formula and it's applicable also for M2, but you need to switch um, indices like B and C into A and D. All right, so let's do it quick. So M1 should have the phone coordinates. All right, let's go back. So B, I just mark here, six and three, and C is six and one, okay? So for X, obviously you see that X, actually we don't need to calculate because and one point has the same coordinate for x as our points. So m1, x coordinate is 6, but for, in order to calculate, uh, y coordinates 1 plus 3 and over 2. All right, so we can do it quick. Uh, 1 and 3, 4, over 2, 2. 
all right and obviously this is the, the midpoint so the distance to three is one and distance back to one is just also one okay so two three is one and one two is one all right so m1 we've calculated so m2 now x is one and simply the same for y all right what we need to do we just plug those coordinates into our equation so if we set up m1 coordinates into equation we will have 6a1 so we plug in here and here right as you remember we did it in part one okay 6a1 plus 2a2 equals 1 and the same we need to do with point m2 all right so um a1 because it's just one times a1 okay all right and plus 2a2 okay equals 1 so now what we're gonna do we I will use method of elimination and I want to kill variable a2 because coefficient already aligned so I subtract from the first equation the second one I'll get 5a1 equals basically all right so zero right so that's why a1 coefficient to be zero and what about what about a2 so a2 is just one minus a1 and over two yes from that equation so or it's going to be one over two all right so a2 is just uh, one over two and we go back here and see so that's our equation so we found out that a1 is 0 and a2 is 1 over 2 so we just plug in and we'll get the following so that will be 0 and we're we'll left with a2 times y that becomes just 1 over 2y equals 1 all right so from here y equals 2 so we figure out that equation of line 1 I just write it um, so the equation of line 1 is just y equals 2 and this is really the case so we did it actually using like general approach but as you can see it's pretty like long it's really time consuming in this case because have a look which gradient this line has it has basically zero gradient because mm, you see it's parallel to x-axis all right so that's why general equation of the line of any line similar to L1 which is parallel to x-axis is just simply y equals uh, the point actually the y coordinates of the point way across y-axis and so in this case it's 2 but no matter which point you'll take y coordinates is always be 2 right because this line is fixed at the level of 2 all right if it's fixed let's say at the level of a where a is some number so the general equation for this line is y equals a so uh, for those who can prove uh, because we now start doing uh, the equations starting to figure out the equation for line 2 that goes through the other midpoints which are here so and should be like vertical this is line 2 so the equation of line 2 that goes through um, fixed value x equals let's say b should look like x equals b all right so here y equals a in here we just switch variables and instead of y we'll have equation for x so you know why because actually we need to fix now x level because you see no matter which point you take on the line always x to be fixed so for any point x coordinates is going to be b all right so for this reason i just figure out that quickly that um, if we have let's say we want to calculate the midpoint right between 1 and 6 we just add them up and divide by 2 so in this case x is 3.5 so that's why equation of the line l1 uh, is going to be um, is going to be 
x equals 3.5 all right one more time have a look just the vertical line goes through x equals 3.5 so x level is fixed and this value is 3.5 all right so we need to write an equation of this line so we have done we've done that so one more time for those who wants to prove using an algebraic approach like standard approach they uh, can use the same method as I used before. I just show you that um, this method is really time consuming and for this simple case you don't need to apply that. Just simply apply um, like you know a concept about parallel lines to the x-axis and parallel line to the y-axis. Okay so we've done that and let's go to the next task. This is ABC in the socialist triangle. Let's do a quick so here I will apply maybe a fast concept because actually I have not I don't have a lot of time so today and ABC in the socialist triangle with AB equals AC all right so what we're gonna do we need to um, set up the coordinates A B and C and with k some unknown value but we know that k is positive so explain why k equals four all right so what we're gonna do here, all right? What we're gonna do? Um, actually, we can draw up those points, but I'll save my time and I'll just use the concept. At least I try to use the concept A B equals A C, and just we use the, again the coordinate geometry. Uh, just remember how to calculate the distance between two points, all right? So here we just need to use the formula x minus Let's say x a minus x b squared plus y a minus y b squared. All right, that's the distance between two points a and b. For those who are really interested in how to derive, I will show you it probably in current geometry topic. But for those who can do it, uh, who are who wish to do it like by their rounds, I'll just give you a hint. This is actually Pythagoras theorem. All right, just put random points on the coordinates plane and try to find the distance between them. All right, so in, uh, in this case, I just apply uh, this formula to uh, two segments, AB and AC. Let's see, so A, B, I'll just work it out, the coordinates, the difference in coordinates. So five minus zero, I'll get five squared and one and minus minus one, I'll get two. So I'll get two squared, all right? And the same I apply for AC. So in our case, AC, 2 minus 0 squared, all right? So 2 squared. And K minus minus 1. So I'll get K plus 2 squared, all right? That's the concept. Sorry. Uh, K minus minus 1. K plus 1. Yeah, that's my bad. All right. So now... In order to figure out k, you see, now we've got an equation. So it looks like quadratic, but uh, I think we'll arrive to maybe linear. Let's see. So 5 squared and 2 squared will get 25 plus 4, right? So that will give us 29 square root. And we'll get the same here. So 4 plus k plus 1. I don't want to expand brackets because it will save my time later on. Okay, now in order to resolve that, I just want to get rid of square roots and I just square it up. I raise to the power of 2. So 29 equals 4 plus k plus 1 squared. All right, k plus 1 squared, I just leave it here. And 29 minus 4 is 25, all right? So now I do the way back operation. So the reciprocal operation and taking the square root. All right, so k plus 1 equals plus minus square root of 25 is 5. Why I taking plus or minus? Because you know that negative 5 squared is just 25. Okay, so maybe in one topic I'll explain why why is it so and give like clear explanation using quadratic formula. Okay, uh, now just leave as it is. So k1 value is 4 and k2 is negative 6, but we know that k is positive all right so how we which value to choose obviously the first one okay 
So I'll take the first value k equals 4 as the result. All right. So we, sh we, we proved that k equals 4 as we were asked. Okay. So let's do next. Mm, so here we explain why k equals 4. Now find the coordinate of m, the midpoint of line segment BC. All right. I just do it blindly without any drawing. So the M coordinates is the midpoint of BC. So I'll need for this reason, which points I need? I need in B and C, just two points. I know now K values for, all right? So M coordinates, let's do it quick. Five plus two over two and one plus four over two, okay? So if I simplify that, I'll get seven, of, of seven over two was 3.5 and 5 over 2, all right? So that's M midpoint coordinates. Show that the line segment AM and BC are perpendicular, all right? So for this reason, uh, in order to prove that two lines are perpendicular, we apply coefficient methods, so basically gradient methods. If this is L1, this is L2, we know that the gradient for M2 for example, should be reciprocal with negative sign to the gradient of M1. Again, so I'll show you maybe in next video why is that. I just apply this concept here and now I think we can figure out. So what 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 line segment we have? Let's say L1 is just BC, all right? And AM is line L2. So that's AM. So just find the gradients, okay? So gradient of BC, all right? Gradient of BC is basically what? The difference in coordinates B and C for Y, right? And over difference in, one more time, so change in Y over change in X between coordinates. We did it on the first, in the first video dedicated to straight lines. So, right, let's do it mentally. So BC, change in Y, B and C, right? We we have four mm, 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 gradient of BC. That's five. So K is four. Yeah, four minus one and over two minus five. Right. So four minus one because of K and two minus five. All right. So this gradient is negative one. So gradient for the line AM. Okay. The same formula, change in y, so a m. So we need to take the m coordinates. So I'll write it clearly. So m coordinates is 7.2 and 5 over 2. So basically, if I start from the coordinates for m, I'll take 5 over 2 minus coordinates y for a, and the same 7 over 2, that's x coordinate minus x coordinate for a. Let's see a coordinates, 0 and negative 1. So a, 0 and negative 1, all right. 5 over 2, minus minus 1, and over 0. So 7 over 2 minus 0. All right, that is 1 if you calculate that, yeah. So that's why we proved that this is this equation is true, and this is... That means that two lines are perpendicular. Okay, and the last question, find the equation of line symmetry triangle ABC. Okay, let's pretend, so we have the triangle ABC, a setup like that. Um, by the way, it's isosceles, right, as we proved. So it looks like it goes something like that. And the line of symmetry, because of two sides here uh, to be equal, the line of symmetry should always go through like the top and this vertex, this is point A in our case, because A, uh, let's say B and C, and AC and AB two, so, so, so two equal sides. So that's why the, the, the line of symmetry, this red one, should go through A and the midpoint M. All right, so basically it contains uh, segment AM. What we're going to do, we just plug the coordinates, right? Or, because we calculate the gradient for AM, so we know the gradient is better to write in the intercept form. So line of 
symmetry. And we just write in and create an intercept form. All right, let's do it. So we will have mx plus c. In our case, gradient is 1, so we'll have x plus c. And now we just need to calculate c as y-intercept, so we can plug any point. So let's plug coordinates for a, okay? So if we apply a coordinates into our equation and plug it, so we'll have uh, c equals negative 1, all right? So that's why final equation for the line of symmetry is x minus 1, all right? So where minus one is x intercept. Thank you guys. Just I need to go. Sorry, that's maybe a little like short session, but I hope it gives you a little understanding how to work it out and apply the, the principle of coordinate geometry. So just waiting our next video dedicated to straight lines. I'll explain about like uh, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, and probably you know the figure out the distance formula, all right? Thanks again, and see you 